Hey guys, this is Pineapple, and I want to first say thanks to all of the new Promise Neverland fans that are finding the channel. Honestly, I wasn't sure what to expect from the support when I decided to start doing Promise Neverland content, but the first video is at 25k views, and I'm really glad that that video is going well. For today's video, we're going to be talking about the true hype behind The Promised Neverland. Yeah, I've seen a lot of the hype going on throughout the week as people react to the first episode of the series, but in this video, I want to talk about the actual reason that they should be hype and why most people are wrong about The Promised Neverland. Before we talk about that, make sure you're following me on Twitter at Vocal Pineapple and that you have that bell icon on so that you don't miss out on any of my new uploads. With that said, let's hit that intro and talk about a few things. Hit it! So the hype behind Promise Neverland seems to be simmering up pretty well online. I've been thinking that this series is going to blow up in a huge way during this anime season, and it's looking like it absolutely will thanks to all of the popularity that it already has. The first episode has been reacted to by hundreds of YouTubers, and online, people are screaming its praise. Why are people so in love with the show though? Well, let's talk about that first so we can get into why they should actually be hype when watching this series. You see, people are excited and surprised because they thought that the series was one thing, but it actually turned out to be another. It seemed like it was going to be this weird anime about orphans and a possibly shady group of humans that are keeping them in this house, but it actually turned out to be this huge affair with demons and humans working together to use children as food. This shocking twist gives us a bunch of questions right as we're supposed to be solving the question of what our human pursuers look like, and that timing is on purpose. Right as we're thinking, oh, are these guys that are talking and we can't see right now the villains? Is it going to be two dudes working with the lady to kidnap these kids or something? BAM! Right then we get hit with the sight of these demonic creatures and then we see them lifting up Connie's body while they explain how this place is a farm and all the orphans are food. They refer to them with various quality identifiers and another demon comes out with a clipboard and he starts taking inventory. This whole thing is surreal because not only are we shocked about the twist that these are huge monsters and the influx of info, but now these demons are doing things that are undoubtedly human-like. Like when you think of the demons, your first thought is to think of these feral beasts, but when you really look at them and hear them, they just sound like things are moving as usual. They sound like people just doing their jobs, and that's the scary thing about things here, because this entire scene takes our worldview and flips it on its head. Whereas this could have been a series about kids and their struggle to get help from adults and normal people who have no idea about what's being done to them, this twist presents us with the idea that there might not even be safety elsewhere. It plants the doubt into your head with the nonchalant nature of these demons and how well oiled this machine seems to be, and that's why it's such a reactable and amazing scene. Our view of the kid's potential escape from the Gracefield house has completely changed, and that's just more tension on the viewer and the characters. Tension is something that this show has tons of, and it's actually one of the things that makes people stress how this show is sort of the closest thing to Death Note that we're going to get from this generation of shonen authors. I do agree with this comparison, because I've read the manga, and I know that there are a number of twists and turns that involve high IQ plays by various characters. Another comparison that a lot of people give out though is that they think this series has an Attack on Titan vibe to it. The kids are inside some gated off or walled off area and they're pretty much cattle. It mirrors what Aaron thinks when he realizes that everyone in the walls is pretty much just waiting for the day that the titans come and eat them. If they don't fight back they're as good as cattle and a lot of people are drawing comparisons to that mindset and the potential plot that they see for this series. Well I don't blame people for thinking that this series is going to be like Attack on Titan and it is in the ways that I just mentioned but the big thing that people tend to associate with Attack on Titan is the character deaths. I could see how you could expect the majority of the cast to die in a show like this. I could see why someone would think that a majority of the cast is expendable and it could have something to do with the fact that all of the characters wear white and they sort of blend together things to that uniform and their English names and generic designs. An interesting side note that my friend Dan pointed out that I thought was interesting was that all of the characters wear white which might symbolize their innocence but Isabella is the only character in the house with white in the front and black in the back. The white in the front is just an apron that she puts on but her base outfit is this black dress that she wears. This can be seen as Isabella being a corrupt character putting on a front of innocence while being corrupt in the back. I think stuff like that is super interesting and that's just one of the awesome observations you can make while watching this show after you know certain things, so be ready to give it a rewatch when it eventually ends. 
This show has the potential to be the erased of the year, and hopefully it'll be good enough for us to get a second season next year, because the end of this year's season is going to have people begging for more episodes. Getting back on topic, it's easy to think that some of the characters are more important than others, because this is something that's fairly common in anime. Some characters are just designed more than other characters, like how it's obvious that Emma, Norman, and Rey are the three main children. But in other anime, this can mean that the background characters are exactly that. Just background characters that are expendable, or characters that are likely to die so the show can use death without having anyone actually integral to the plot dying. It's a common thing for shows to do, but Promised Neverland is different. Neverland spits in that way of thinking and says, nope, we're going to do even better than that. A lot of you I've seen are excited that the show might have a lot of death, but I'm here to tell you that you are wrong. Probably for being excited about that in the first place in a show full of kids, but also about that being what the show is all about. A lot of the reactions and people online that I've seen actually talk to this key moment of the episode, but it's something that's very important for understanding the series. In the final scene of the first episode, our characters' ultimate motivations are put out into plain words for us to know what they want and what goal we're here to watch them complete. Yeah, this show is really dark, but let's not forget that it runs in Weekly Shonen Jump. It still fits into the Shonen archetype in many ways, and it still has a goal that our characters are working towards. By the end of the first chapter of the first episode in a series like this, you have to know what the goal is, because that's the main motivation for you to even be able to watch the show. It's like how the first episode of anything has to tell you a lot about these characters, but it mainly has to tell you about their goals and their motivations. With these two things, you have your core plot. The character has a goal, and their motivations show us how hard they're willing to go towards that goal. For Naruto, we see that he's a weak ninja that can't keep up with his other students, and we learn that there's something buried deep inside of him, and it makes people treat him differently. People have resentment for Naruto, people are scared for Naruto, and most of all, people want to be rid of Naruto. Naruto is like a stain on the community, and people didn't even want their kids to be around them. So what is his goal? His goal is to be the Hokage, the leader of all of these people, but also the protector of all of these people. He acts macho and says that it's because he wants to make everyone look up to him and respect him, but we know that with that comes a responsibility to take care of the whole village. For Luffy, he wants to become the Pirate King, and eventually we learn about how he initially goes about becoming a pirate and the promise that he made to Ace and Sabo. He vows to become a well-known pirate one day, and when he thinks that Sabo dies, this promise strengthens and Luffy swears to be the king of the pirates. It's this really nice and emotional thing, but do you see the pattern that we're talking about here? The characters have a goal and a motivation. In The Promised Neverland's first episode, Norman reveals what his goal is. His goal is escaping with Emma and Rey. He says that it might be possible if it's just them, but then Emma, our main character, goes no. That's not possible because my goal is to get every single child out without losing another life. Emma outright says that her goal is to get them all out, and that's the actual important piece of information here, and it's also the missing piece of the puzzle in the question about the real hype for the series. Knowing that our goal is to get every child out safely raises the tension way up when you really start to think about it because it changes what you think this series is again. First you think this series is about some weird orphanage where kids are being held by humans. Then you find out it's about children being farmed by demons with the help of other humans and them trying to escape. This makes you think that plenty of children will die, but then the ultimate revelation of the first episode is a third change in what this show is. It reveals itself to actually be a show about kids having to outwit demons and humans to keep everyone alive while somehow plotting an escape. This is awesome, and you should definitely be really, really excited about it. In episode 1, Emma, Ray, and Norman talk about how neither of them has ever beat Isabella in chess, and since she's the one looking over them, you can imagine that this is going to come into play. Anime loves using chess and a character's ability to play chess as a definer of their mental ability. Characters that are masters of chess are masters of manipulation and planning, and that's what our characters are up against. They're up against someone that they've never been able to beat, and now they have to face that person in her prime game because you saw Isabella's face at the end of that first episode. It's on. There's obviously going to be a price to pay for the bunny being found outside, and you know there's going to be some Death Note level plays between the characters and their captors. This drama almost manages, and sometimes does manage, to bring as much tension as the moments in the series that feature the demons and their twisted forms. And that's the real hype behind The Promised Neverland. The game of chess and the game of cat and mouse that's being played by different characters at different levels 
all at the same time and how all of that sort of just comes together to form the hope that the characters can all escape into an unknown world without losing one single character. Can they do it? Let's find out. If you guys enjoyed this video and you're hyped for The Promised Neverland, hit this video with a like and let me know how much you want more Neverland content in the comment section below. The new episode is on the way soon, so make sure you're on the lookout for that because things are about to get very complicated for everyone in the Gracefield house. I love you guys and I'll see you again soon, but for now, this is Pineapple and I've gotta go. Peace.